Monday is the 24th anniversary of the first ever MLS game. And we've got two guys who played in the first season of MLS. Timbers head coach Giovanni Severese, Timbers assistant coach Miles Joseph, both members of the 1996 Metro Stars. Uh, you guys started your season a week after that inaugural MLS game. Let's get right into it. Like, I want to I wanna know what the, what the offseason was like before the first season. How did you guys get to the Metro Stars? What were those few months like before MLS started? So I, I think it's definitely two, two different uh, ways that we arrived there, Miles and I, uh, because he was part of the national team. He will tell you the stories. Uh, but for me, it was I had to go to a combine in, uh, I think it was Irvine um, in, in, in California. So they had about 100 and something players just uh, with different team college, college coaches. Some MLS coaches there watching just players. And we just had to, you know, show off to, to them to try to see if we got picked on the draft. Um, and that's how it started. And then uh, we got to the draft. And uh, for me, uh, you know, I was waiting to, to be picked by one team and then uh, New York, uh, New Jersey Metro Stars ended up, you know, picking me at the ninth uh, position. And at that moment, I was like, oh, amazing. I'm going to play with Don Adoni, somebody that I, that I, you know, grew up watching. Mm -hmm. So that was the way I arrived to the Metro Stars. Uh, but we had to go to this combine, which was incredible. I mean, I, we had... Uh, so many players that were trying to survive and try to make the league. That was incredible. Miles, yeah. you were just coming out of college, right? Yeah, it was a strange one because we, we had the, um, the Olympic team. Bruce had took, taken the Olympic team to Chula Vista in California. And we, had, we had been living there. And so the draft was done over the phone for the college draft. And I just remember sitting like down near the equipment room in uh, Chula Vista and just listening to the draft going, and the Metro Stars had the 11th and 12th pick, and they, they took, I think I was the 12th pick, they took Scott Lamphere, and then the 12th, uh, and then they, and then, then I went the 12th, and then Bruce had the next pick, and I think if it went one more, I would have been on DC. I didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't sure, I didn't think that, they didn't, I didn't think New York was, because I didn't really have any communication with anybody, so it was really strange how they did the college draft. I mean, I'm sure some players were talked to, but I was kind of a, not like a no one really knew me, you know, type pick. So uh, it was it was pretty it was pretty interesting. I was so excited though, so excited that I get to go play for a hometown team. So then, what was what was like preseason like for you guys at, once you joined the Metro Stars? So so for me, you know, the, the year before I played with the Rough Riders. Uh, so I played with Tony Meola. So I had some players uh, that I knew. Um, there were some other players that went to college, the same college LIU where I went to. So I had already some, some of the players that, that made it to the team uh, that I knew. So it was great for me to be able to go into precision with people that I already knew. But I, if I remember, in, in Miles, uh, I don't know if you remember as well, I think all of us, all the teams went to this exact same location in Fort Lauderdale. I think it was in, yeah, I know it was in Florida, but I think it was Fort Lauderdale. And um, everyone there um, was training differently. We, we had a facility with, that we have to go to. 10 teams at, the, at that time, uh, because that's how MLS started. And I just remember that we were the team probably working the least out of all the teams that <laughs> I remember. That's we had a lot of days that. off, but we had uh, one session practice. Um, and, and I remember New England Revolution coming yeah. back on three practices while we were just, uh, you know, doing regen on the, on the pool. Uh, yeah. So, you know, the, the memories. I remember that all the teams, I think, were at the same location uh, at that time. For preseason, yeah. So for me, it was uh, I, I was in California for all the preseason. I, some of the MLS teams, I think maybe the Western teams, or some of them were out in California training on the polo fields in like San Diego. So we had to drive up and train against them. So it was like that was right before the draft. And then when the teams were picked, um, we had, we had continued to stay with the Olympic team, and we were released the week before the first game, uh, like midweek. So we continued to train with the Olympic team. And I think I came back and trained uh, right after the San Jose game. And then I had to go back with the Olympic team. And then I flew from California or to California from uh, D.C. I don't even think I flew with the team out to California because I was only there the day before. Right. Which is uh, when I remember that we had that, that practice session in a, in a college. I remember exactly. This. Which was an unbelievable. Should I tell a story? Should I tell a story? Maybe you should tell the story. Do you think it's all right to tell? Mm, uh, go ahead. 
it's uh it was pretty funny so here i am a young the young uh young player on the team my first real time around the group and so we had a training and uh hadn't really trained with the guys but so the coach brings us in after the after the training and we, it was fun we had a great training and uh he's going over the tactics and he's kind of showing the guys who the lineup's going to be and a a, cor a current coach in the league had an extra cone in his hand and threw it down <laughs> in in the formation so the coach was going oh it's like uh, we have an extra play in uh and then one of the players the captain was he the captain of the team then one of them right he goes he goes oh it's almost like we have an extra player and uh he's like yeah the coach is like yeah it does look like we have an extra player because he threw the extra cone down and i was like oh my lord this is unbelievable yep so it was like one of the funniest things as he's going over the tactics of the thing and then the player throws the extra cone he doesn't see the extra cone and, so, and, and the player goes Oh, it's almost like we have an extra player on the field. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had on that team three current MLS head coaches, so that is act, like it's not actually clear who you're talking about. Bob. Yep, I'm not going to say a name. I'm not going to say a name. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what, I, what, what I do remember uh, the day before as well, it, it was that it, it was uh, there was a lot of you know excitement uh, around all of us uh, that finally MLS was going to start. Uh, something that we've been waiting because, uh, you know, as I said, I was playing in the, in the USISL. Um, it was great. We had some great experiences, but, you know, the talk, the organization, you know, the, the vibe, everybody really excited about this new league. You know, the World Cup was two years before, so the still people uh, very much, you know, passionate to, to watch more soccer. And especially in, in LA where, you know, the final was played uh, at, at that, that World Cup in 94. So we saw, and I started reading in newspapers, so we expected there was going to be a nice crowd of, per se, 5,000 people. And uh, we were like, wow, it's going to be, you know, a lot of people, 5,000, you know, so there's the talk about 10,000. And then we go in, I remember reading the newspaper in the hotel. I remember exactly the, the hotel that we stayed. Uh, I have it, you know, the pictures in my head. I remember exactly the name. Uh, but I started reading the newspaper, and then I, I read an article that was talking about potentially you know, 20,000 people in the stadium. Uh, so all of us were so excited. Wow, it's going to be an amazing game. You know, the, this new start, our first match against LA Galaxy. Um, but then when we arrived to the stadium the next day, it was completely different. It was so much more. Um, you know, it was incredible uh, because uh, it, it was around 70,000 people in the stadium. But not only the amount of people in the stadium outside, I, I, I swear, probably 20 or 30,000 people outside that couldn't even get inside. I think uh, police start turning people back to their houses because if the stadium would have been 200,000, maybe. <laughs> I tell you, everybody wanted to watch the, the first match. What was it like playing in that? In a totally packed Rose Bowl. Miles, you, you want to start? I mean, I came in at halftime and I, I when like they were like miles warm up, I was like, holy, like I, the last game I played was a college game. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm down there warming up and I think I had to go in and play against uh, Andrew Shue on the on the other on the other yeah. wing or it was Kobe Jones or something. And, uh, and then and then Andrew Shue ended up in the game and I ended up playing against a guy I was watching on TV and I was like, yeah. this is this is really incredible right now. But um you know, like the emotions and the, it was just like, I've never, never ever played in front of that many people at that time. And it was just, it was incredible. The, the, the set, like you couldn't hear anybody. It was all like in the moment and you had to really know everything that was going on around you. It was really incredible experience. Yeah. For me, for me, I had the, the, the luck that I played before with the national team. So I played with big crowds, but the big crowds were 30,000, 40,000. I mean, it's, Tended to 70,000 at the time. It was even more exciting. Um, and, uh, and it was just the vibe, you know, being part. I think, I think what was the biggest thing was being part of that first match, wearing the jersey of this New York team that was starting something special. That yeah. Major League Soccer, our dream, you know, come true. Uh, a professional league that was first division considered. Uh, and us being part of it. And for me, uh, starting that, that first, you know, that first match, I just remember, you know, it was uh, a, a team that had a, a few weeks to train with Eddie Fermani, who came, you know, had his experience uh, with the New York Cosmos. 
and uh, and we wanted to start you know, with the with the the right way, winning the match against a difficult team. They they had. Uh, you know, Campos, and, and probably everybody came to watch Campos that day, and, and he was he was a show. He was a showman. Um, and the, uh, um, El Tanque Hurtado, and Cienfuegos, and Kobe Jones, they had a very good team. And, and I remember, if we, I think they were playing with a, a back three, uh, because I think Lothar yeah. liked the back three. It was very popular, at, I think, at that time. Yeah, um, was Fra Fraser, Robin Fraser, Fraser, Fraser uh, I mean, college college man, and, uh, and I yeah. think that some I forget the other one. Yeah, because Vanny wasn't there. I, I don't think the no, first. No, I think year. it was like Mark Semioli or. Uh, I think Mark Semioli. I think Mark Semioli. Yeah, I think yeah. Semioli with the three of them in the back. I think if not four with Semioli as a as a right back. But yeah. then we had um, you know we had the Caricola, we had Tony Meola, we had. Uh, you know, um, so many other guys uh, that, that were with us, you know, in, in, in that first match that where the team, we didn't have uh, Tab Ramos because he, he didn't make it in time. Uh, Roberto Donadoni yeah. um, wasn't there, but guys like Mickey Kaidis, who had a, a lot of, you know, a lot of years playing in New York and in, yeah. in my coach at college at LAU. So um, it was ex very exciting. Uh, the first Burmese, Burmese in the first game, right? Peter? Burmese, of course, of course. Yeah, Peter, Peter, Peter I mean, uh, captain. Peter was the captain. Yeah, uh, Peter, yeah. Uh, Peter was, uh, you know, one of the most, if not the most, experienced player at that particular match that that we had, and uh, it was incredible. Um, I was trying to go through all the names uh, in the lineups. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm being, I'm forgetting some some more names, but it was an, an amazing start for us. I'm sure you guys remember the goal, the first Metro Stars goal, which Gio, you scored. Miles, you got the assist. Uh, yep. Can you guys talk me through what you remember of that goal? I just, re I, from what I remember, I haven't seen it since uh, Blanco was teasing me about it, but uh, <laughs> I, I think I ran near post or towards the middle of the goal. Uh, the ball was wide left and uh, I just opened up and I, there are two guys like close to the middle of the goal. So I kind of, went for the far post and I think I missed kind of misplayed it and and uh, <laughs> always Gio is there and bangs it in and we were just like wow I mean that was it was just amazing like we're I, I just couldn't believe what just happened you know and it was amazing just an un incredible feeling it was uh and, and Rodriguez uh made a great play outside and Mundo I remember um, he kept the ball on, almost went outside. I think he curved between a few people, dribbled through. And then I think he's the one that I think finds you or tried to shoot and pass, like they got to you. And then uh, it's what you said, you know, and the thing that I was like in the right spot right there to head it uh, for the first first goal. Unfortunately, we couldn't find another goal to tie or, you know, more to win. But uh, it was definitely a special moment for, for all of us. You mentioned earlier, Miles, Andrew Shu playing in that game for LA. This guy was a TV star on Melrose Place at the time. He had yeah. he had soccer bona fides for sure. Yeah. But like, what's it like for you guys playing in front of seventy thousand? You mentioned there's a TV star playing for LA. Um, what, what was going through your mind with that? I mean, it was. It was I, I had a chance to meet him because he had come because he lived close where we were training in San Diego. So he was training with us a little bit with the Olympic team. Uh, so it was kind of a little bit weird playing on the other side because we trained together a lot and then when he got subbed in I was like whoa like all these people now playing against <laughs> this you know playing against Andrew Shue but from a standpoint as he was a, like at that point in the league he was a good player like I mean he wasn't you know um so like at the, you know the start of the league it was uh no one knew who like really it was new to everybody who could really play at that level so um you know so it wasn't like I think, today I think, where there's a lot of video on guys and you can watch guys and really study them and you know who who you know who the the right players are that can fit in different teams. It was all new, so it was just based on all training at that point for the league and guys that you know the big superstars, you know Geo being one. Uh, <laughs> Um, just you know you, you knew about those guys but the rest of the guys um, you really didn't know and everybody knew he was a good player so um, and his fitness was unbelievable the guy could run forever so and I just remember him running if I remember also a humble guy you know I mean a nice oh. guy that yeah. um, because that time there was you know he had a, ce a celebrity uh, status yeah. and but nevertheless I think I remember the interactions and and the way you know he cared about the, the game growing as well. He did it in a very humble way, and 
And that's one thing I think outside of the field that was uh, great to see from him as well. But uh, he was a competitor. Um, and as you said, I think the coaches at that time, you know, they, they didn't have some of the tools that we have now, you know, in technology to find out and scout players. But I'm sure they had a lot of relationships with so many yeah. people. That that's, how, that's how they find out, you know, what to expect about a player, you know, calling college coaches and, you know, figure out where did this guy play before? Let me make a couple of phone calls. And, and that's how, you know, they relay the information at that time. You guys talk about the, the technology that you have as coaches now. Just looking back, I mentioned it before, but it's remarkable how many people on that Metro Stars team are now head coaches. Gio, yourself, Peter Vermees, Tab Ramos at, at Houston. And then from that first game against LA specifically, they had Robin Frazier, now Colorado head coach. They had Chris Armas, now you know, Red Bulls head coach. Um, did you guys like realize back then that did you all wanted to go into this? Was and Miles obviously yourself on that team as well. Um, did you guys talk tactics? Did you talk about maybe being future leaders of the league at that point? I, 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 don't think, I don't think that there was that talk about, you know, uh, being leaders of this, this MLS league. I think we all felt proud to be the founders participating on the foundation in, in the start of this, this huge league, which all, all of us, we were all proud of to be part of. We wanted to succeed. Um, you know, we went, I went to college as well, like Miles, um, in, you know, in a different way, because then I played two years in the USISL uh, with the Rough Riders. And, and um, we wanted this league to be amazing, to succeed, to continue to play for us many, many, many years. Uh, maybe at that year, if there was not MLS, I probably would have, you know, uh, tried to play somewhere else uh, around the world. But uh, the, that, that league, the league gave us the opportunity at that time to be a, part of something special. And the crowds were great. Not only that game against uh, LA Galaxy was amazing. I remember we had a, an average, a, a giant stadium of around 30,000. We had some great crowds as well that first year playing at home. Um, so we, we knew that this was going to be special. We wanted to last. Looking now back in where the league is at, at the moment, I don't think that we, you know, our dreams could have gone that far, but our desire to see this league grow was, was there and we felt very proud to be part of. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was an amazing uh, time to be a part of the league. I, I, I don't think I, <laughs> looking at the coaches then, what they were going through was, it was very app <laughs> appetizing to be a coach at that point in our careers. Um, but I think as, as you went on and you started to learn more and matured as a player and you started to understand the game, um, more um, as you went on. I think it became, you know, towards the end of my career, which was a lot shorter than I think Geo's, um, I started to really like understand uh, the game a lot more and understand why coaches did certain things. And, and then that led, that led into kind of my, you know, love for coaching. And I, I'm sure it's kind of similar to what Geo, what Geo experienced. Yeah, for me, I think we were fortunate, and you mentioned it. I think uh, even though there was a lot of craziness uh, because there was a lot of, you know, changes uh, with the coaches, the quality of the coaches that we had, um, I think, was great. I think we, we learned a lot. Um, and, uh, and, and, and for us, you know, we had to adapt quickly because also each coach came with a different idea. So we had to, you know, adapt very, very uh, fast. But I, I agree, there were moments I remember uh, trying to write, you know, uh, practices, uh, trying to understand, you know, the coach, why is he making these decisions? Why is, so, you know, there was, a, there was definitely in our minds uh, the, the trying to understand more um, because uh, it, it can help because of the love that we have for the game. Um, did we think right there that we were going to become professional coaches? Uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, mm -hmm. What we knew for sure is that we wanted to stay in the game in one form or, or another, that this is what we love to do. And then for me, it, it drew me in, in a different, uh, at the beginning, I started with youth. I started with uh, doing some commentating, uh, you know, some uh, front office, uh, you know, things, uh, jobs. Uh, and Miles uh, went directly to the coaching and then to the uh, professional. Um, so, you know, we, we knew that this is what we wanted to do because uh, it, it was our passion. But coaching definitely uh, found its way, I think, uh, you know, for all of us uh, afterwards. Finally, you guys were there season one before, season one even. Now we're in season 25, and you've seen it through. What stands out to you the most about 
the evolution from back then to now where the league's at 26 teams, soon to be 30 teams, um, and, and in the place that it is right now? Yeah, for me, I will say um, the stadiums, uh, because uh, yes, we did play in incredible stadiums, but they, they, they didn't feel ours. They felt like we were guests in, into a different uh, you know, place. Um, now, you know, having the soccer specific uh, stadiums uh, in which, you know, you see an amazing crowd with, uh, you know, a different vibe in each, in, in, in all the different places, it, it's incredible. The scene now, the quality, how much it has gotten, I think, uh, better um, in, in from the first player to the last player in the roster. Um, I think that back then, you know, we had some good players, we have some young players, but I think not, now it's a little more cohesive. Uh, there's more talent around. Um, as I said, the crowds, um, the level of, uh, you know, uh, tools that we have technologically, uh, staff, um, scouting departments now, you know, looking for more players, how, how to be better. I will tell you the, especially the MLS office. I remember the MLS office, a star was at this small place. Now it's like three floors and there's so many people working there. So it has grown uh, incredible. And um, thinking back then when we had 10 teams that right now, you know, we grew to 24, 25, 26, all these teams wanted to be part, uh, paying this fee to, to want to, to, you know, participate in Major League Soccer. It, it was just something that we hoped for and, and it's great to see. Yeah, I think for me, it's a lot of the same stuff, but the, the one other thing I would add uh, to what Gio said was like the amount of stuff around the teams that they have now, the training facilities, chefs, a performance department. I mean, we had, we had one guy that made us like swim. Got to be careful here, uh, but <laughs> he make us swim after training, you know, which we thought was great. And, you know, and then, you know, to run, we would run through a neighborhood to warm up and do some stretching. And then, you know, everything tends to like evolve over time, but you know, you have departments now and it's it for me, like uh, being a player now compared to when we were a player, he, now you have everything you need to be successful. Everything. And also, so, and also, yeah. And you, you remind me also something as, as well that I think it was, you know, a big, big change from that time to here. It, it was it, the contracts in regards to, you know, uh, not too many players or very few players had a guaranteed contract. Yeah. Um, and uh, so every game, every practice, you have to be at your best because you don't know if the next day you were going to be back. Uh, yeah. Because uh, I tell you, if I remember correctly, I think two of the starting players that played the game uh, that match, you know, in the, against the Galaxy, I, I, I think they were let go right after the game. So they didn't continue. Um, so it, 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 that was is very different. Uh, in one way, I think it's, it's great right now um, because, you know, it's, it's a, a more settled job. It's, uh, it's something that you know that uh, if you do well, you're going to have some guarantees. Um, back then, also, uh, you know, players, every game, they play with everything that they had. They know that they don't do it now, they do as well. But at that time, it was uh, a matter of staying on the team or having to go. Oh, guys, we could talk stories from 1996 all day. It's <laughs> awesome, awesome to hear. And there'll be plenty of time to, to tell more, but we appreciate you guys taking uh, time now to, to look back on it just before the, the anniversary of the inaugural game. Take care, stay healthy, um, and good to talk to you guys. All right. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. It was Take a pleasure. Care.